What's up, everybody? It's the end zone with your boy Craig. Your boy Ace. Before we get started today in our show today, um, I just wanted to pass on along this. Um, my friend, he works at the Greg House. He's having a 5K race this Sunday, um, May 5th, 2019, at 9:30 in the morning. You could go by the Lynn Greg House. There's, they're doing this uh, sponsorship for a uh, scholarship for all four high schools and all four kids. And out of those high schools, there's a first and second place winner. Um, you can always reach him at Sean Coogan. It's S-C-O-O-G-A-N at greghouse.com. If you want to donate water, snacks, anything can help out these kids. And if you don't want to run the race, the 5K, you can also walk it. We need it. We need it. They, they need the support. So if you can, whatever you can do is appreciated. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we hope that you guys can even show up and uh, give that, give that uh, support uh, hands on. So uh, with that being said, it's time for post draft. And this draft had a lot of surprises in it. Uh, there was a lot of good surprises, a lot of bad surprises. And me and AC are gonna break it down for you as best we can. So we're gonna start off with that number one pick from Arizona. And I think it's no surprise here. And a little bit of a surprise for us. We kind of predicted something else, but Kyler Murray, number one overall. Tell me your thoughts. Um, I think it's good for Kyler mm -hmm. Murray. Um, we always, we all knew that he was going number one. I think yeah. it was no surprise. Even though in our mock draft, we try to switch it up, try to yeah. do different things because it is a mock draft. So you want to switch things up from what you normally know. but. I'm happy to see him go number one pick. Yeah. Hopefully he could do good um, with the new coach over there, new quarterback. Um, so it's a new team. So I'm interested to see how they're going to be this year. Yeah. And for me, I'm also going to say it's good. Uh, <laughs> Kyler Murray, it seems like he could be the franchise quarterback that they need. And they believe in him so much that they traded away Josh Rosen to Miami, which I actually really like that trade too. I think that Josh Rosen might not be done and being under Ryan Fitzpatrick, who is a journeyman, and that could be his future, he could probably learn a lot from that guy. But you already said Rosen's going to be a journeyman, so. Yeah. You know, yeah. So, I think you know, learning from another journeyman can't hurt. <laughs> All right. So, now we're on to that number two pick. San Fran goes with Nick Bosa, and that is not a surprise to anybody. But what do you think? I think it's no good. No good because, oh. yes, we knew. It's no surprise to nobody that Nick Bosa was going number two. But I'm interested to see what he's going to do at number two pick. Um, they have all this hype around him because his dad played in the league, his brothers played in the league, but I want to see what he's going to do. So, hey, only time will tell. All right. Well, for myself, I was going to say good. <laughs> but earlier this week, it turned into a no good. And that would have been no matter what team he went to. I've heard some funny things about Nick Bosa. Heard he's a certain type of guy. And, uh, <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to put salt on my show, so I'm not going to get into it. We don't get into but, politics. Yeah, on we're, show. Not, we're not going to get into the politics. But for me, it's a no good. <laughs> uh, and then we're going to move on to the number three pick. New York Jets went with Quinnen Williams, and for me personally, that pick is good. Good. And AC is going to tell you why. I love that pick. That pick is a great pick. Um, I think he's kind of like. You can't say he's a steal because it's the top three picks, mm -hmm. but a guy coming from Alabama and then he's playing with Jets. Jets already have a, a tip top defense. Their yeah. defense is not too shabby. So it's I think with the all. extent of him being on there, um, teaching them, learning from the other guys that's there, I think he could do good over there and make some noise. He plays in a tough division, so it's like, mm -hmm. you know, how are you going to adjust when you're playing in that type of division and that type of atmosphere? He's going to be tested. He's going to be that's battle a good, tested. That's a good division to test yourself in, especially where that division is coming up little by little. It's definitely developing Every team into in that a division, competitive. Though. Yeah, yeah. So I'm saying. It's becoming a very competitive division, more, uh, more so. And the fact that you got a guy that could have gone number one at number three, it's not that far of a drop, but I do think that they got a great value there. Uh, so now we're going to move on to the number four pick, uh, going with Oakland. And they got the defensive end, Cleland Farrell. What do we think about that pick? He's my Clemson boy, but I say no good. I think Okay. I wrote down on my paper that it was an interesting pick. The reason why I say it's interesting is because there's – other guys that they could have got for that number four mm -hmm. pick. And, they, and Oakland also had other picks in this draft where they could have probably got him later on. Mm -hmm. So I would say no good due to that, but I don't think he's not – I don't think he's a bad player. I like yeah. him as a player. I think he's going to do well, but I thought they could have just got him a little bit down the, uh, down the way. I agree. I, my, my, my thing was at the end of the day, 
I'm giving them the good because we said it last week. You could close your eyes and put your name on a first-round pick, and you're probably going to make a good decision. But I do think that there were other players, the likes of Ed Oliver, mm-hmm. uh, Josh Allen, who could have gone to the to Oakland and made a more and, and made a, a difference as well. And I think those players might have panned out a little bit better for him. But Cleveland Farrell is uh, he's not he's no uh, brush off the shoulder, so I think that that's a good pick. But they could have they could have did better with it. All right, next, Tampa Bay going with Devin White, the linebacker. I'm going to let you say it. Good. Exactly. That guy right there, he's going to come into the league starting, playing. Mm -hmm. So it's all about getting him ready to get up to game speed, get up to the NFL speed, and see what the NFL is like. We already know he's a great athlete. He's a great linebacker. He he comes downhill. He's, He's great out on the edge. So to see what he's going to do in Tampa Bay was quite a surprise to see him go to Tampa Bay. Mm, yes. But it's like, it's surprising to see him pleasant go there. Pleasant surprise. But it's a pleasant surprise to see yes. him go there because I think he's really going to make noise, and that's a great pick for Tampa Bay. And I couldn't say it better myself because Tampa Bay is struggling on defense. And whereas, you know, there's a lot of positions that they could have addressed on that team, but they need defense. And I don't believe that there was a cornerback or a safety worth going that high. So to get Devin White, who's arguably the best linebacker in this draft, uh, I think that it's good. All right. Now we're going to move on to a pick that I know my buddy here has been waiting and dying to talk about. So I'm not even going to... I'm not. I'm gonna, let, I'm gonna let him handle it. So Daniel Jones to the Giants quarterback position. Tell him. Tell him why you mad. I'm mad because that's the worst pick of the first draft. The first round of the draft, hands down. Um, I thought that okay. You already got rid of Odell, so you showed that you don't want to replace Eli. But then you pick a quarterback at number six who played for Duke when there's other quarterbacks that could have gone way ahead of him. Two quarterbacks on my top of the head, but we're going to get to them later, that could have went way above him, you know? And then it's like, you bring this Eli Manning type of guy, how long are you going to keep him on the bench? So it's like, you wasted a sixth pick of the draft when you could have got him second round, second day of the draft. Mm -hmm. Or with your second pick. Or, or, yeah, because they had yeah. another pick, like a 17 pick of this draft. And he would have been could, available. He would have been available at 17 because nobody was worried about him. But to take him there, I thought that was the worst pick that they could possibly do. Worst possible like, pick. You could have brought in, if you're gonna, if you want to keep Eli, bring in an offensive lineman. There was offensive offensive linemen in that draft yep. that could have went. Um, they Absolute. took a defensive player Jonah later Williams. on. Jonah Williams. Yep. You take a defensive player later on in the draft at number 17, why can't you take him off top? That would have made you look a little bit better yep. than if you flip flop that pick with the 17 pick and the number six pick, then nobody's on Giants like that. Yeah. But the I way agree. they did it, it was it, stupid. Stupid. Gettleman has his hands full. It, it looks like the Giants might be trying to replace Cleveland with their decision making. Cause I do not believe Daniel Jones is a bad quarterback. I do believe he has starting quarterback quality. But you know what? They said this. Uh, I think they said it during the draft, but there were some commentaries that said this. Even if Daniel Jones ends up being better than Dwayne Haskins and Kyler Murray, this was still a bad pick. You could have got him later with your second pick, and you passed up on a quarterback that had that shown more potential than him in Dwayne Haskins. So, in my opinion, and even no matter who they would have drafted, <laughs> I would have said no good. But what I am going to say is for everybody else, it was good. <laughs> I hate the Giants. <laughs> so I'm happy you made the wrong decision. Thank you very much. All right, now we move on to the number number seven pick. Jacksonville Jaguars pick up Josh Allen. And I'm going to jump ahead and I'm going to say it's good because I love Jacksonville and they're becoming defensively the new Seattle. And I think that adding Josh Allen to the edge was the best play. I mean, I thought that they would go offensive linemen to give their new quarterback some help, but... Defense wins championships. I totally agree. You couldn't have said it better. Um, that's what I said. When I saw that, I was like, Josh Allen at seven to oh. Jacksonville? Mm. Like, they already have a great D. Now you're making it that much better. So I just think, like, it's, it's going to be scary, real yeah. scary. Like, 
Him and just, Calais. Him and Calais, just stay healthy, you know, play in the system, learn from them guys in front of you, mm -hmm. and you're gonna be a good, you're gonna be good. You're and, gonna be real good. And that's a that's becoming uh, like a defensive environment, and that there's no better place to learn defense than on a team that's focusing on their defense. Mm -hmm. And Jacksonville obviously felt the slump of their defense last year and is trying to make sure that doesn't happen again. They want to go back to being the number one defense. I like so how I like they put it. money into their D, so that's yeah. good. You know? It is. It's smart. It's smart move, investing into, a, uh, into the part of your team that you, is, is strong. Yeah. You know? All right. Now we move on to Detroit, who picks up TJ Hokinson. Now, to me, this was a surprise, but what do you say? I'm going to say... No good to this one. Oh. Um, it was a surprise that they took a, a took a tight end, but you know they they did it before a couple years ago with Ebron, mm -hmm. so that makes it. And they lost Ebron. Yeah, so that makes it okay. But I, again, there's other guys there that could have went in the same position that could have helped your team immediately. Yep. I'm not sure how much how quick T.J. Huskins gonna help them immediately compared to these other guys, but I just don't know. So that's why I'm going to say no good. I'm not saying he's a bad player. I'm not saying he's not a good fit there. I just don't know how quick he's going to help them. And, I mean, history has shown that it's exceptionally rare that a tight end comes into the NFL first year and plays well. Like, it doesn't really happen. Uh, I can't think of one off the top of my head that made a huge impact his first season. Uh, but Aaron? Aaron Hernandez? Yeah. Yes. There Aaron. you go. Aaron Hernandez, one of the few tight ends. And look what happened to him. Maybe Gronk? No, but he wasn't. I don't know. I don't think nah. Gronk was as big of an impact um, his first season. I think after season. a while. Yeah, yeah. Afterwards, yeah. I think yeah. he built into it. But Aaron so, Hernandez came straight out. Because, but he was like a receiver at Florida, too, slash tight end. So it was tricky with him. Yep. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion, when it comes to good, no good, I have no answer. I'm going to say <laughs> it's 50-50. I think that... They need a tight end. Uh, so, it, in my opinion, it could have been smart to go to a tight end depending on how T.J. Hokinson pans out. But I do believe that their defense needed some answers. They could have got the likes of Ed Oliver. They could have gotten Devin Bush. Uh, there's a lot of players, I believe, that were available to them uh, that they didn't take advantage of. So I'm not going to give them a good or a no good. I'm going to say no contest. <laughs> uh, and now we move on to Buffalo, who picks up defensive tackle Ed Oliver. And I am a person, I'm a true, true blue Patriots fan, so I want to say no good because I hate Buffalo, but because that, it is good. Uh, they need that defensive help, and I think Ed Oliver is a player that can come right into that team uh, and make a big splash. What about you? I totally agree with you, but like we just said, that division beefed up off this draft. Mm -hmm. This year, that division is going to be scary. Because normally, like, you could say Patriots is always going to be the top yeah. of that division, right? Mm -hmm. But after seeing what happened in this draft and everything and some movements that happened on the offseason, yes. you're like, wait, hold on. Brady's getting, not the disrespect. Yeah. Not, no disrespect, Patriots fans. No disrespect but, to no one out there. facts is facts. Facts is facts. Brady's getting a little older. Last year, they ran the ball a lot more than normal. Mm hmm this year, who knows what's going to happen. But if you look at the teams around them, they all kind of took the Patriots formula against them. So it's kind of to see, like, it's kind of weird because it's like, even like the Jets, they went and got a running back. They got defensive players. You mm -hmm. know, Buffalo, same and thing. They, and they got, they got wide receivers that were like, you know. That, steals. Yeah, like, steals. Yeah. Exactly. There you go. That's Perfect the best word. way to say yeah, steals. They got steals for yeah. wide receivers. And you're right, man. Like, this division is sneakily getting better and better and better. And it's becoming more dangerous for but the, the Patriots. But the only down, I love Ed Oliver, as we talked about. Yep. But the only down to him going to Buffalo it's cold out there in Buffalo, boy. Oh, hey, boy. Hey, he's a Houston kid, boy. <laughs> so, it's when it's below Kenny zero. Handle it. Kenny Handel. We're going to get below zero. They'd be oh, negative man. and snow games and stuff like that. Mm, what yeah. kind of Ed Oliver are we getting? Because, like, one of my best friends um, from college, we played college ball together. He was a running back from Miami, Florida. When it got cold out, it used to be the funniest thing seeing him because it'd be Vaselined up. Uh, it'd be putting uh, tape on his air holes and stuff like that to keep the wind from coming in. Because those, those guys' bodies shut down when it's cold because 
They used to be in 60, yeah. 70 degree of the weather. Whereas I'm Massachusetts, I'm coming out under armor, leggings, I'm good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Compared so, to like. Let me, uh, hold on, I, I have to. Vaseline, that. That, they say Vaseline keeps keep that coat up off you. I don't know. I you don't I'm need from New it. England. Yeah, I don't need it. You know, okay. but that, that's you know people that, do different things. That's like, whatever you believe in is what you believe in. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, they say Vaseline keeps the coat up off you. Whatever helps helps. Whatever helps helps. So uh -huh. that's what he thought helped. So I, that's why I always look at it as interesting when when guys go from like playing in hot weather their whole career to going to the cold. Mm -hmm. It's an adjustment. Yeah, big adjustment. The way you breathe, the way the, the way you take off, the way you like. Certain, certain how you run, like all those things affect in the Especially cold. Especially when you, know? you get deep into the game. Yeah, and then you got to know how to when what part of the game to exhaust your energy, when part to save your energy. So it's like things like that is what he's gonna have to learn. It's beyond. It's bigger than what I'm trying to say is what Ed Oliver there. It's gonna be bigger than football where he has to learn. He's gonna have to learn that weather. Like when people uh -huh. say, yeah, playing at Mile High Stadium, I'm out of breath. Yeah, the thin air up there in Denver. You go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When you go from Houston to New York. Game. <laughs> it's cold up there, upstate New York, down there, Canada. So it's like, oh, man. it's a different change. So you know? that's a valid point yeah. there. All right. So you heard it here. All right. Moving on, we have we we had a trade. Now, um, Pittsburgh traded up, and they made a pick to go for Devin Bush, linebacker. What do we think about that? Sure. It's good. Mm -hmm. I think this was one of the steals of the draft. Um, I was surprised because it's like, okay, Pittsburgh traded up. So they, they traded up with, for, um, with Denver for this pick. Yeah. So it's kind of like, okay, Pittsburgh got that pick from Denver, and it's like, what are they going to do? All this A-B stuff, all, how we talked about bringing in a receiver and stuff like that, old lineman. But then they went there with a defensive player, Devin Bush. Devin Bush is the closest thing to Ryan Cesare since they lost him yes. to come out there. So it's kind of like... Okay, now you go get that Ryan Cesare mm -hmm. type of player that you haven't had in the last year or two. Okay. Now he's going to be out there, and you know he's already ready to play. So it's like, it's interesting to see what this young kid's going to do because he's going to bring it. He is going to bring I it. I like him a lot. I, I'm saying it's good for him. I think he's going to bring it, but it all depends on what you're liking this. All right. Well, for me, what I'm going to say is for the Steelers, it's good. But my personal opinion is for the Broncos, no good. I don't think the Broncos should have traded away this pick. Um, I think this would have been a good space for them to even go after Devin Bush. Yeah. I think they could have used that help. Um, I don't think whatever they got for uh, this for this pick, I don't believe that it was worth it because it was worth it for the Steelers to lose what they had for Devin Bush. So I don't believe it was worth it for Denver to give up what they had to for this to give up to the Steelers. Imagine having Von Miller together. I'm saying, I am saying, and you gave up that pick for this guy where you could have got him, and now he goes to the Steelers. And then what if Shazier comes back full health? Now, 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 what are you yeah. now? What are you, now, what are you looking at? You know. So it, I, I, I like, I like what the Steelers did. I just don't like what the Broncos did. So. Uh, that makes sense. It's a good, no good situation. All right, next, we have Cincinnati going with offensive tackle Jonah Williams. And for me, I'm going to say that this pick is good. We all know that Cincinnati needs offensive line help. Mm -hmm. What do you think? No, I, I totally agree with you. I think um, that was a great pick by Cincinnati. Um, you come in, you bring a big boy in, um, someone who has that experience who can come in and help you right away. That's what I think about when you pick someone in the first round of the draft, you got to look at it like this. Could this player help me right away? Because other than that, you're wasting your time because exactly. you can go get this guy second round, third round. The draft goes from Thursday night to Sunday. So it's like you can go get the different players at different different picks, but it's like if you're going to go for the first – the, out of the first 32 picks, mm -hmm. you got to get somebody that's ready now. Not someone right that's going to be ready in two, three years unless it's a quarterback. I have a different mindset for quarterbacks because quarterbacks, it takes time to develop and come right into the league and play. But if you're like some, a, some For some, but for, for some, some it's not. But I, I do agree. I think a lot of quarterbacks need that little transition yeah. time. But it's like, so like in this situation, I think it's good protecting. Uh, I think he'd be good in Cincinnati. Start, help out the run game and the passing game over there for him. Exactly. I couldn't say it better myself. I love. I, I like Cincinnati. Um, I think that Cincinnati, they they have something. They just can't 
get it all together. And if they can get all the parts together, they could be a dangerous team. And they need to do it sooner than later. AJ, you know, just like Brady, AJ Green's not getting any younger. You now have AJ Green and Tyler Boyd with Joe Mixon. I think that little combination, you need to do something to make sure that your that your game is on point because uh, you know, if not, you're just going to be that team that's always, like, just almost there, but not quite. So we both like that pick. I think, uh, I think we did say offensive. I think you said offensive line, and I said, yeah, we I said linebacker, but then we both agreed offensive lineman. So uh, we were on the same page there. Uh, next, we're going to move on to the Green Bay Packers, and they picked up Rashawn Gray. What do you think? I think that's good. I think yeah. that's a great pick for them. Um, they need that defense to help. Like, they yep. need to bring in defense. So I thought that was good that they did that. And so I like – well, they, they had another pick in this draft too. Yes. And I like how they trying to focus on the defense aspect of it because offensive-wise, you got Aaron Rodgers over there. Um, you could have – they could have went – the only thing that they really needed offensive-wise probably was an old lineman maybe. But – that's the only thing that could have helped yep. them. So it's like if you go for defense, I, I totally agree with that. So I'll, okay. I accept that pick as, as a defensive pick in that position right there. All right. So for me, I say it's good. But I would have been happier had they gotten an offensive lineman. You know, I think that it's time – for Aaron Rodgers to be given more time in the pocket mm -hmm. and not go running for his life and then end up getting hurt. Um, so even though I think that they got a really good player with this pick, I would have preferred them go offensive lineman. Where I said, we, you know, we said it before, you can't, you, you, know, you really can't <coughs> go wrong unless like you're the Giants uh, and, and you're <laughs> picking a guy that you could have gotten the second half of the draft with your first round pick. I mean, I don't think you can go wrong. So, yes, this guy is going to come in, and I think he's going to help right away. But I really think that offensive line help was what was necessary. But I think, too, on the flip side of things, too, like we was talking about, it's the yeah. draft. So you want to pick people who's ready for you now. Yeah. So I think he's ready for them now, and they can always go get offensive linemen. It's offensive true. linemen is, is, is big in the NFL. Like yeah. You can always go get you a big hog. Like. An offensive lineman can be trained. I feel like offensive yeah. linemen with the right coach – Almost any line can do as long as you have the right coach. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess you're right there. So, I'll, I'll take it back. <laughs> you win. No, 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 no. <laughs> All right. Now, we're going to go with uh, Miami. Miami selects defensive tackle Christian Wilkinson. And I'm just going to say right off the bat, I have no clue who this guy is. So, I'm going to leave it to my boy here to let you know who he is and whether or not it was a good pick. It was a great pick for Miami. Okay. <laughs> Due to the simple fact is, he's a Clemson boy. Yeah. And if you watch him play, he, he's, he's smart, fast, covers the edge, yep. gets there. And not to mention, he's, he's in beautiful weather in Miami. Yeah, so I think it is in, beautiful weather. that's a Massachusetts boy, too. Oh, is he? Yeah, he's oh, from okay. Mass. That's, that's my guy who I told you last week. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, so it's good, you know. <laughs> like, I, I was always saying that I'd rather see him go to New England because he's from Springfield and stuff like yep. that. But. On the flip side of things, you're in Miami. There's nothing better than being and, in Miami. You get to play. You're away from your family in Massachusetts, so it's good, you know. Yeah. So you get you get to come home one one, one game. So that's cool. That's All cool right. with me. That was. I don't they mind did, that pick. They did say during the draft that they got a great pick with that pick and that he could come in and help right away. Mm -hmm. So, um, and he's you said he's a Massachusetts boy. If they're from Massachusetts, it's always good. Always good. All right. So now we're going to move on to Atlanta, who picks Chris Lindstrom, offensive lineman. Uh, and for me, I'm going to say that this pick is good because Atlanta needs O-line help. And I think that uh, if they got the best available offensive lineman, they made the right decision. And you're absolutely right because we talked about this last week when we was like, we got we have some sleepers in the first yes. round. He was one of them yes. talking about how he went to BC and stuff like that. But on the flip side of things, Matt Ryan's a BC guy, so you got to protect your brother, you know, same yeah. alum. So it's, it's okay. good to see that. Yeah, a little They're brotherhood. Reunion, a little brotherhood, yep. a little reunion. So I think that makes – that makes it good for my for my Atlanta Falcons fans out there. You know, I got a lot of them. So 
that's a good pick for you guys. You guys finally did something right. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to move on to the Washington Redskins who picked quarterback Dwayne Haskins. And we know it's good. And I was so happy for Washington uh, for making this pick for the simple fact that, like, one huge Huge steal. Like, to get Dwayne Haskins this late, I think that was a huge steal. I almost thought he was going to end up in Miami once uh, once the Giants passed on him. I really thought he was going to go Miami. So the fact that Washington got him is really great news for Washington. But for Dwayne Haskins, I don't know if it's that good of news. I Who's going to so. throw the ball to besides Jordan Reed? It's like this on the flip side. Okay. You got to look at it like this, right? It's the NFL. Yeah. Anybody could have a good game. Mm-hmm. Any given Sunday. You know, that's why they call it any given Sunday, because any given Sunday, anything can happen. But he's RG3 2.0. So it's kind of like, I, I love that pick because, like we're saying about the number two pick of the draft, yeah. who we really thought, who we really don't like, uh, because yeah, it's yeah, political yeah. views. Yep. A lot of people have political views on the Washington owner, too. Uh, but now he goes and picks this kid, uh, Dwayne Haskins. <laughs> now that changes people's political views. Yeah, he got himself a token. Exactly. Okay. So you can't really go with political in the NFL because you never know what's going to happen. True. So I, I like that pick. Um, and then um, RG3 also tweeted, like, oh, give this kid a chance. It's like, RG3, you had a chance too, buddy, but you mm-hmm. messed it up. Yeah. You had plenty of chances. Even yep. though I always say, like, we always talk about this with my friends and stuff like that. We always say, like, yeah, they rushed him back on an injury. But that's the NFL. You're scared to lose your job. If you don't play, you you lose your job. So it's mm-hmm. like, is it a rush or is it not? So it's kind of like. And at the end of the day, he could say no. He yes. could say, I'm not ready to go back. So at the and, and at the end of the day, hit with the talent that RG3 had, if he'd have been like, listen, I ain't ready to go back. You guys can cut me if you want. When he'd have been in full health, there would have been demand for, for RG3. Sure. It would have sure. been demand, and he might have still been playing as a starter, maybe a journeyman or whatever, but he wouldn't be no backup if he would have waited. But I do like that pick a lot, though. All right. I, I, I love that pick. Mm-hmm. I do. I, I am. I'm worried about who they're going to get for wide receivers to give him help. I'm going to I'm just going to make the assumption that maybe they're not going to start him this year until they build up that offense. I like that, too. Yeah. All right. So now we move on to Carolina, who grabs my pick. Defensive end, Brian Burns. I was, you know what, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm watching the draft and I'm seeing all my picks not happen. I know that they were the right positions, but we picked the right positions a lot, but we missed a few picks. But when they picked Brian Burns, I was like, yeah, that was my pick. (laughs) I got all excited because it was just, you know, I got that that one right. It felt like I hit the mini lottery. Yeah. Like I scratched the scratch ticket for like 50 bucks. You know, it's not the best in the world, but you feel good. You feel good about yourself. No, I, I agree with you. I don't have nothing bad to say about that pick. It's a good pick. Um, he's coming to a good defense. Yep. Um, he can make that defense a lot better, too, along with the other guys that's there. Mm-hmm. So I really like that pick. And you already you had that down for your mom. Right. So I got to give credit where credit is due. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, I, think, I think it's a good team for him to go to. And I think, yeah, he can help out right away. So, yeah, we know that that pick is good. Uh, moving on to... Uh, the worst drafting team in the NFL this year, and they went with the defensive tackle, Dexter Lawrence, to the Giants. Um, What do you think? Well, I'm going to say this. This is a two-part answer for me. Yes. Okay. I knew it would be. It's good because I like Dexter Lawrence, and he's a Clemson guy because I'm biased, but it's no good because it's the Giants, and they could have got him with that. They could have got – so it's like – you go backup quarterback, and then you go DN. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, no, I don't. I don't. Where's I, your mind at? You and you could have gotten the likes of, you know, like we said, Ed Oliver, Rashawn Gray, and then got Daniel Jones. So you could have got a guy that might have been a little bit better. No, no, like no disrespect to Dexter Lawrence because he's a great defensive tackle. And had they even picked De- Dexter Lawrence with that number six pick and then Daniel Jones later on. It wouldn't have been bad. It, yeah, it wouldn't have been bad. People yeah. would have been like, oh, that was a surprise pick going after Dexter Lawrence this early. And then and then they would have been, if you would have got Daniel Jones with your next pick, they'd have been like, great pick. They, great pick. You know, they waited. Yeah. They got Daniel Jones. And, it, you know, it's not about the player. It's about the order in which they grabbed him. And that, you know, yeah. terrible. So that's my two-part answer, yes or no. 
Yep, I agree <laughs> with you. Yes and no. Uh, but every pick for me that is for the Giants is a no go. But then again, like you, like we were saying too, that was that pick from Cleveland. That oh, was that yeah. OBJ pick. Yep. So it was like I thought they was going receiver, receiver, receiver because okay, you don't want to replace Eli, but you repl- you want to replace OBJ. That could have been that pick right there. Mm-hmm. But like that could have been Nikhil Harry, who it, who got. ODB hands. You know what I'm saying? He got hands. So you lose Hollywood a guy. Brown, Hollywood Brown. We could yeah. keep the list going. Yeah, the list DK. goes on and like, on, man. There's so like, many guys that they could have gotten uh, with that pick. And, you know, I'm glad that they made bad picks. And I hope that these picks never work out for you. You know, congratulations. <laughs> so moving on, we have Minnesota going with a center, Garrett Bradbury. It's good. I'm just saying I called that. Yeah. That was on my mock. I had there it going right there. I'm going to let Craig talk about it because <laughs> I already had it. All right. Well, we all know that the Minnesota Vikings need offensive line help. For one, they're, they're running back out injured, so you don't want to have them run in there with a weak offensive line. You got a quarterback who should have been in the top five that didn't really do too well. Yeah. He, needs, he needs, needs more protection. He needs a little bit more time to get out the ball. He needs a little bit more time to make decisions. Uh, and I think that this pick – was absolutely good. Uh, congratulations, Minnesota. Your offensive line just got a little bit better. Any more thoughts on that one? Sure, indeed. All right. <laughs> so, moving on, we have Tennessee defensive tackle Jeffrey Simmons. And I know my boy wants to talk about that. I love that pick. That was my favorite pick of the draft. Um, like we said, me and Craig had some sleepers. I always, before we left the show, we said, remember this name. And I'm going to tell you again, this upcoming football season, remember that name. That's it. Yep. There you go. You had, if, when you see how well this guy does, you're going to know that you heard it on the end zone. All right. Moving on to Denver, picking tight end Noah Font. And for me, I am going to say this pick is absolutely good. Um, I don't think that they went too early for this guy. Uh, I think that they need tight end help. That's one thing Denver's missing uh, since they lost. Um, what, what was that tight end that they had? Went to went to Jacksonville. Oh, we not Thomas. Thomas. Ju- since they Julius lost Thomas. Julius Thomas, they have not had a dominant tight end. And I don't know if Noah Font's going to be dominant, but all I got to say is when you have two tight ends that go in the first round, there's a reason for that. And I personally had liked Noah Font more than TJ Hokinson. I don't know if he's better, but I did like him more. Uh, so I think that this was a great pick. I think it's a great pick. And not, not to mention, um, they both played on the same team. Um, Noah Fawn and TJ, so it's, it's good to see both of them get picked in the yeah. first round too. So. It's got to it's got to feel good, like yeah. your tight ends. You know, yeah. tight like great tight ends are not something that just you can shake a tree and come up with. Like good tight ends are few and far between, <laughs> yeah, which is hands, why you, yeah. you you might get five tight ends in a whole draft, and that and and that's nowhere to the amount of players that get drafted in every other position. So hats off to these guys for going in the first round. All right, moving on, we now have Green Bay Packers going with safety, Darnell Savage. What do we think about that pick? It's good. That kid's a beast. Yeah? Uh Um, I didn't, like, I'm not going to lie to you. I heard the name a few times. I didn't really know who he was, so I had to YouTube him and watch his highlights. I'm like, yo, this dude was laying the wood at Maryland. Like, Mm -hmm. he was coming downhill. This, like... It hurts me to say this. Sorry, my 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 viewers out there, but that kid's Sean Taylor like. Yeah. And I don't say that much. Okay. He's Sean Taylor like. But not to mention, I love what Green Bay did because you got your two picks of the first of the draft. Yeah. Two picks in the first round. I mean, I'm yeah. sorry. Two picks in the first round, and you pick two defensive guys that can help you right away. I like that because, like yeah. we talked about, you can always go get offensive linemen to help out um, Aaron Rodgers. So therefore, take a two defensive guys. Those guys, is, they're going to be roommates in, in, in mini camp and all that, feeding okay. off each other. So it's going to be good to see. I want to see. It's going to be a sight to see over there. And, you know, like we always, like we said, um, we said this in week one show, um, Green Bay was one of those teams where you score 50 on them, the score would be 55 50 type, you know, yeah, like, exactly. so it's kind of like bringing in defensive guys will help, help you um, and help that score out. So hopefully that can help them. All right. So I agree with everything he just said, but my answer is a no good. <laughs> and I'm not saying that because they didn't get a good player. They got a great player. 
The proof is in the pudding. My boy said it. He told you why he's a great player. Sean Taylor-like. He, he comes down and he brings the wood. But guess what? You need offensive line help. <laughs> you got a defensive player. You need to address that offensive line. And I think that the likes of Andre Dillard would have been amazing for you. And you passed on him for a guy that arguably may bring your defense to the next level. He could probably go in right away and give you that help. But in my opinion, I think if you already went to defense and you're the Green Bay Packers, you need offensive line help. So that's where I go with that one. Respect. All right. <laughs> so now we're going to go on to Philly, who did pick Andre Dillett, offensive tackle. And for me, I will say that this pick is good. Uh, and just because of the simple fact that Carson Wentz has been getting hurt two years in a row mm -hmm. and he needs to be protected and – you got to, you know, you get that, you buy the house, you need the insurance, and Andre Dillett will help add to that insurance policy. I like that, too, and, and they um, they moved up because that's the pick from Baltimore. Yes. So I like how they, they, they moved up to get him. Correct. Just to, And that shows, and that, like you said, that shows the QB, hey, we're trying to help you. Like, I trade up a couple of slots, mm -hmm. brought you in the offensive lineman, I'm trying to help you, I'm trying to protect you. So that that's going to make him play with more confidence to know that that ownership is trying to help him there. Yeah. So. It show, and it shows pick. the confidence in, in his that they believe he has for the future. Yes. So, yeah, I like this pick all the way. Um, and, you know, hopefully he can get the job done. Uh, moving on to Houston, who goes with offensive tackle Titus Howard. And once again, same as Philly, it is good. They need offensive tackle help. Uh, they need to protect the quarterback because Deshaun Watson might have been the most Stacked quarterback. I was telling you that. We, we talked about this. Yeah. I told you he's one of my favorite players in the league, d because he went to Clemson and everything. Mm -hmm. But we talked about how he was getting killed and all that, bringing in some offensive linemen. And you said, you said yourself, this draft class is deep with offensive linemen. They better draft one. And they did. And they so did. So you got to love that pick. So. I, I absolutely loved it because – not for the same reasons as you, but I am a huge Deshaun Watson fan. I love the way he came in his mm -hmm. first year and just ran the league down. Like, if he didn't get hurt, we might have, you know, we might have seen offensive MVP, if not just straight up MVP. And I think Houston might have made it further into the into the playoffs. I don't know, but uh, I like this kid, and I don't want to see him. I don't want to see what happened to RG3 happen yeah. to him. So right. I'm glad that they're getting him protection, and I'm pretty sure he's happy that they got it for him as well. Uh, moving on to Oakland, and I might, I don't, I'm not know if I'm mistaken. I'll turn back a couple pages to double check, but I'm pretty sure I made this pick. Yeah, Josh Jacobs <laughs> to the Raiders. What do you think? I love that pick. Um, I love it because um, Mayshawn Lynch, he, he retired. Yep. Um, he's he's going to go in playing right away. Well, he, they got Isaiah Crowell, but I think Josh Jacobs will take that starting yeah. position. And dude's a beast. Um, beast. I loved his story, where he comes from, his background, how he how he talked about how he used to live in cars and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Really didn't have a place to live, so it's like when that those type of people grind harder. They appreciate the value of life, and um, to see this man get drafted in the NFL, um, it's respectable, and I think he's gonna be a great player for them. Yeah, I think he, I think I think he might end up having an unexpected season because here's the thing: for a player like that, who comes from such a hard background to now getting put behind one of the best offensive lines in the NFL. And that's just going to spell success. AP-like? Huh? AP-like? Ooh, AP, that's strong. I know. AP is strong. I know. Um, With that offensive line, yeah. what, he could put, what he could potentially do? Yeah, what he could potentially do. You might, you might, have, you might have that potential. Um... I feel like it's too early for me to say that. I was that. just throwing it out there. I just wanted to get you going. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. I just wanted to get you going a little I bit. I would love – listen, I love Oakland. <laughs> if Josh Jacobs has an AP rookie year, um, I'll be super excited for him. And I'll be super excited for Oakland. I love that team. So let's hope that it happens. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, Baltimore traded down for this pick, I believe, from, for, with Philly, right? Was yep, that the yep. pick? Yeah, that was so the pick. So they trade down. Um, and they go for wide receiver Marquise Brown, in my opinion. It's good. It's good. And that's a steal, like, like we're saying about yep. steals. Okay, you trade, you trade it with someone, and you trade, it, you trade it with Philly. Philly got the best available player for them in that draft. Correct. Okay, you trade down. You didn't lose much. No. Because now you get Marquise Brown, 
to come to come help out. You mm -hmm. know, like you have a quarterback that can sling. You know, it's just about keeping him in the pocket and making him believe that he can throw the ball instead of run the ball. Mm -hmm. And I think you keep you bring in receivers like that, and even still, he scrambles around. You just extend the play a little bit. Those are touchdowns because he can he can sling it. So it's like I like that pick right there for them. See, the reason why I like that pick is similar to why you like it, but. What it looks like to me is that they're building the Baltimore Ravens from scratch. I love that. When they do that with an offense and you, they bring in a rookie quarterback, now they have a rookie wide receiver. They just brought in a new running back. Uh, and I think that this is going to spell trouble in their division. I think that these two, you know, you got a, a second-year quarterback with a rookie wide receiver. I think they're going to link up real fast. I think it's, and I think that the other good thing is he gets to learn from Willie, Sne Willie Sneed. Uh, Willie Sneed is kind of like, in my opinion, one of the most sleepiest uh, um, slot receivers. I love Willie Sneed. Yeah. I don't think he's, I don't think he's gotten to show off these last couple years, but he is a, he is a very gritty wide receiver when given the yeah, opportunities. Yeah, he is. So I like this pick a lot, um, and I think that we're going to see a lot of good things happen in Baltimore over the future. Yes. All right, and now we move on to Washington Redskins who get defensive end Montez Sweat. And for Montez Sweat to go this late, there's only <laughs> one answer. It's good. Tell us why it's good. Uh -huh, I'll tell you why it's good because everybody thought he was going in the first – the first 10 picks. Yes. So it's like, yes. Um, they say injuries, hot problems, or whatever they had going on with him. But at the end of the day, it's like, you left him there on the draft board. Washington made a good pick on getting him. Washington probably made the two best picks of the. No, no. Because there was a lot of good picks that I like. But yeah. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. Well, both picks were, I think, unexpected, where like, it was like someone said, Washington, we you got go. you a gift. Yeah. Take it. <laughs> Merry like Christmas. <laughs> Washington, or either that, or Washington was like ski mask on, <laughs> and they're taking this draft by storm because they like people. People saying around the, you know around the message boards and on on uh, the you know talk shows and whatever that oh, that New England won the draft, but Washington won the first round. You mm -hmm. got two players that should have never fallen to the places that you got them. I believe Washington did trade up to get this pick, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Yeah, he traded up with um, but, Indy. Yeah, Indianapolis. But that was genius. Yeah. You got Montez Sweat, and you want you and all Montez Sweat dropping there about all you know all these you know injuries and whatnot. Yep. That put a chip right there. Mm -hmm. And he's gonna take that chip. He's gonna eat the shit out of it. And that's, um, what, and that's why I respect. Um, that's why I respect Washington because they got the two best players when it was their chance to get a pick. Mm -hmm. So, and they got players better than the pick, like way better than yeah. the pick that they got him at. So I love it. All right. So now we move on to Oakland, who goes with safety Jonathan Abram. What do we think? Good. They beefed okay. up that. They, I like it because they beefed up that defense again. You know, they 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 needed to beef up that defense. You go get get Cleveland Farrell, boom, and then now you got then you go get a running back, which is you need to help out to help out the passing game. Yeah. So that helps you out. And then now you go back onto the defensive side of things, and you go get a safety. And not to mention, I like how. They both, um, him and Montez Sweat, went to uh, Mississippi State, and they yeah. got picked right after each other. So that, I like that, too. That's why I said it's good, too. Okay. You know? All right. I like it. Well, for me, I have to do it again. I have to go no good. <laughs> and the reason why I say go no good is not because they didn't get a good player. It's not about the quality of the player because in this first round, there's, there's almost no such thing as a bad quality player. But... I think that the pick that should have been made here was Drew Locke. I think that you passed up on why on quarterbacks on both your picks, which I liked. I liked the but, picks that they went with. Okay. But I think that Derek Carr might not be the future of this franchise, and I think that they should have gone Drew Locke and both. But we up talked that. about this, and we said this. We gave we gave the scenario that if Oakland didn't trade up for that number one pick from number four. Yeah and get Kyler Murray, mm -hmm. then they were sticking with Derek Carr. So why would you go get a backup later on in that round to show Derek Carr, like, you're trying to replace him? Like, we all, we already said yeah. if they didn't do it there, they wasn't going to try to replace him. So that's why it's like, okay, you, you proved that you wasn't going to try to yeah. replace him. 
You did you because they could have got Josh Rosen in for a backup. True. But they, they didn't could. do that. Yeah, they didn't do you that. You know, so they're trying to show Derek Carr like we appreciate you, brother, and we're, we're gonna keep, we're gonna stick with yeah, you. Yeah, you know? we're gonna give you the confidence. Yeah, you need and to that's play. different than Gruden, cause you know Gruden, like he get rid of you. He don't care who you like are. A bad habit. He's, 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 so it's like you showed that utmost respect to him. So I gotta give him a little bit of credit now. They they could go and go get a backup quarterback, just anybody, you know, yeah. any journeyman in the league to come in and be a backup. Cool, but you showed that you wasn't gonna replace him, so that's respectable. That's the only reason why I say that because it's like if they was going to show that they was going to replace him, they, they should have went up here to their fourth pick should have been a quarterback, yeah. not a defensive guy. Yeah, you know? like the likes of Dwayne Haskins. Yes. So, <laughs> I, I, and I, I do agree with that. They showed Derek Carr a lot of respect by not going after a quarterback one of these three picks. But the reason why they should have is because that's what I wanted. Yeah. Because <laughs> you want them to kill him. That's yeah, why yeah, yeah. you want Derek Carr out of there. I want, you know what? I would like to see Derek Carr go to a team that might be able to utilize his skill set a, a little bit differently. Uh, what team could? He, what team would I like to see him go to? You know, maybe a team like Miami. Even though they got, I mean, maybe if Derek Carr was going to end up going to Miami, they wouldn't have went after <laughs> Rosen. I think that there's teams that could utilize uh, Derek Carr, and I think I don't know if I believe in Derek. I used to believe in Derek Carr a lot. I thought Derek Carr He's was going to be a top ten. Year. But if he with, but with what? Yes, see. All He's right. Light it up this year. We'll see what happens. <laughs> All right, now we're going to move on to. I didn't write the name of this team, so you're going to have to help uh, me out here. It's, it's the Chargers. They took uh, Jared Tillery, uh, defensive tackle from Notre Dame. Exactly. Um, I don't really know too much about him. I'll let you talk on that. I don't. Guess what? I don't know about me. <laughs> so I'm just going to say it's good. They must have took the best possible pick uh, for this position. And since neither one of us know too much about this guy, we're just going to move on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now we move on to Seattle, who went with uh, L.J. Collier, defensive end. And my personal opinion is that this pick is a no good. And I'm going to say this is the reason why. You trade up later and you give up a lot to get D.K. Metcalf. I think you should have grabbed him right there. And then you would have had that pick later on. And you might have been able to get someone equally as good. Absolutely agree. Yeah, that's true. It just wasn't worth it to me. All right, well, since we agree on that, we're just going to move on to the New York Giants picking DeAndre Baker, cornerback. What do we think? I don't like that pick. No. I think that was no good, terrible. Giants, no good. Great as an F because they still have Brian Murphy right there. I, that's why I would have went. Brian Murphy. So why wouldn't you take Brian Murphy right there when he's still available? Yep. You let that guy fall at day two. He's like day two, like he went in like the first three, four picks or something yeah, like yeah, that yeah. in day two. So it's like, did, you didn't. Yeah, go, he went. Uh, did he go in the first pick? Maybe. I think he might have yeah. been first pick. Yeah. So yeah. you didn't take the best available guy at that pick, and that's why I don't like that yeah, pick. Yeah. That was. But it's and, Giants worthy. Yeah. That's what Giants yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. So, that's what the know? Giants do. Thank <laughs> you very much, guys. <laughs> All right, and then next we're going to move on to Atlanta, who goes offensive tackle Caleb McG McGarry. And I think I it's good. Pick. They need offensive line help, and that's the bottom line. Yeah, that's it. They yeah. really got two offensive linemen to help out. That's great. I, I love that pick. I love smart it, love move, it, love man. it. Atlanta, you guys are up to something, guys. Because their team is already well-rounded. You yep. got your wide receivers. Your defense is fast, and, yep. it's, and it's strong. So, and you got, a good, you got an okay running back core, so it's like, yeah. you know. I think that that was the smartest play. Uh, and then we're going to move on to my favorite pick of the draft. <laughs> New England Patriots go wide receiver Nikhil Harry. But... I think someone said that last week. Oh, yeah. That was me. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm so, when I saw this pick, I jumped for joy. I'm texting people. I got excited. I hit up my boy like Nikhil Harry. Hell yeah. Because he got them Odell Beckham hands. I love it. We need this. And, and I like that pick, too, because I was at my boy's house, too. He's a diehard Patriots fan. He's like, oh, what do you think they're going to get? And then, like. You can't watch a draft with someone like him due to the simple fact is he's a Twitter guy. So uh, he was getting the picks before they came across the screen. So he's uh, like, oh, yeah, they're going to get this person. It's like, come on, guy. Yeah, don't ruin so it. So it's like he was already <laughs> watching, like, he was already watching, like, YouTube highlights of him before they even announced him. And he's like, oh, yeah, this guy's nasty. So it was like. I'm like, bro, I told you they was going to go get a receiver. Yep. Like, we already agreed that they was going to go to get a receiver. Yep. But we didn't know who. who. My guy was Hollywood Brown, who went up a couple slots ahead. But yep. 
that makes it a lot of sense because if he was still there, they would have took him. So I love that pick by them. Exactly. And I would have liked either one of those guys. Yeah, but absolutely. the fact that we got I, I, I really was I, I had in the kill Harry in my head. I really like this guy a lot. And I think that him and Brady are gonna make magic together. He's gonna bring to the New England Patriots what Josh Gordon was supposed to bring. Even though Josh Gordon did did come in he's and still make available impact. though. Who? Josh Gordon, right? Like he's Patriots? still on our team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we actually put a um like a second like a round tender on like him. Yeah, yeah, a yeah. second round yep. tender. Um we we've Get, we've shown him the proof that we want to keep him. Whether or not he gets to play this year is very doubtful in my mind. I think okay. it's extremely doubtful that he gets to play. But if he does get to play and you have Josh Gordon across from Nikhil Harry and Nikhil Harry getting to learn just football from Josh Gordon. Josh Gordon, we don't want you to give him <laughs> any other type of advice. But if he gets to learn from Josh Gordon, that's only a win situation. Only win-win. So, all right. We've gone through the first round. Uh, the other picks, you know, maybe we'll go through some other stuff uh, next week. But I really like uh, I really like this first round. Everything happened the way I wanted to, including uh, the bad Giants picks. What'd you think? I I totally agree. I think um, out of this draft, we all we we wanted to see the Giants do something, um, but they didn't do much. Um, it, it was terrible. I think they did the worst of the draft. Yeah. I love what Oakland did. I love what Washington did. Um, I love what the Patriots did by getting that receiver in the first round. So there was a couple steals in this draft. Um, a couple GMs, uh, they drafted the best available people at that time, which is respectable. And some guys went day two that should have went day one, but that's part of NFL. It's part, of football, part yeah. of football. So now you just got to work hard, go earn your money. And congratulations to all you guys. You know, it was interesting to see, like, you know, NFL be at the 100th year, the 100th year of them yeah. doing it. And then they announced the. Um, Oh, my cousin for you, the Green Bay and the uh, Chicago Bears game. He says we don't mention the Chicago Bears enough. I told him Chicago Bears haven't done enough to, for us to mention them yet. Yep. So it was like, wait later on, we'll mention them. But that's the 100th anniversary game, starting the NFL off, kickoff. So interested to see in the yeah. 100th season. And if they would have drafted somebody in the first round, we would have been talking about them. We would have talked about it. But them. guess what? They didn't do that. They so didn't do it. <laughs> I like the Bears. I like, I, I, I like uh, Mitchell Trubisky a lot. So, And then you wanted to. Yeah, so before we go again, um, just to end it off, Sunday, May 5th, 2019, uh, registers, registration starts at 9.30 a.m. at the Lynn Gregg House. Um, if you don't want to run the race, you can walk the race. You can volunteer for the race. They're doing donations. They're doing raffles. They, uh, you can donate water. You can donate food. You can do anything. And you got to go to Greg House, G-R-E-G-G-H-O-U-S-E, 5K.RaceWire.com. Or you can always email S-C-O-O-G-A-N at GregHouse.com and Drop a donation. If you don't want to run the race, you can walk the race. If you don't want to be a part of the race, you can just donate to whatever they got going on. I will put the link up later on. And, yeah, support who supports you. Exactly. Everybody needs help. And in this situation, it's always, you know, it never feels bad to give. Uh, it never feels bad to help out. Uh, so Especially do, do what you can. Especially scholarships for kids, yeah, for high exactly. school. Like, the ch children are different high future. That always is going to yeah. be the truth. So uh, I hope to see people show out and, um, it should be a good event, and I hope that they get to their goal. So that's it. That's it for what we have this week. Uh, make sure you check out our show on YouTube. I popped the link up on Facebook. Um, I will get you the link as soon as we have one uh, to put on the screen for you. Uh, check us out on our Instagram pages, minds underscore Craig dot awesome. Mines is Ace John John. And you guys check us out on Facebook, on Instagram. I have, a, I opened up a Twitter. Uh, you can check us out at hashtag e uh, ENT uh, Gym. Uh, you know, our network is called Gym Bag Entertainment. Please show us the support, show the love, and we hope to see you next week. And until then, we'll see you in the end zone. See you in the end zone. Like, share, subscribe.